Hey YouTube, I'm Paul and welcome to my channel. This is my very first video. I thought that the world couldn't survive one more day without my musings and insights, so here you go. Or as my wife puts it after I haul around here once more to show her the stuff that I've made. Gee Paul, that's really great. Why don't you show somebody who cares? Actually, she doesn't say that. I, she's more graceful than that, but I can see it in her eyes. I just got this glass cabinet and I uh, needed a a dust separator for the uh, for the vacuum, so I thought I'd make one based on the theme baffle. Uh, I made a few uh, modifications to simplify, and uh, so I thought I'd explain first what I what my thinking is, and then um, how I built it. It's super cheap, easy to build, and uh, it works great. So let's have a look. As you can see here, it comes out of the side of the uh, blast cabinet and down into a into a uh, bucket with a with a theme baffle in it and then out to my uh, little shop vac and the shop vac's a five horsepower it works pretty well for the um for what it needs to do um and i'll show you what i did with the uh with the theme baffle i, I didn't glue any joints i just uh, everything's just uh, slip fit so it comes apart really easily And there it is. Um, just a standard five gallon bucket. And this is my theme baffle on top. All the dust extraction systems pretty much work the same on the same principle. Either the cyclones or the theme baffles or the, the, uh, the dust stoppers from Home Depot. They all work on the same principle. You, you, your, your, your intake stream with the, with the dirt come, comes in and it's flung around the outside. The, the, the solids settle out and the air gets sucked usually through the center and out to your vacuum. Now the way to, to make the dust settle out as much as possible is to have as much velocity of the stream around the outside uh, and then to stop the scrubbing or the pulling up of the of the uh, settled dust up into your up into your vacuum stream. So this is absolutely just. I made this as smooth as I could get. There's no rectangular section. I maintained the velocity as much as possible coming into the coming into the um, cyclone into the, the separator, and it just spins around. Um, the other part. And I, what I believe the theme baffle, what it really does is it stops the, um, the dust that's already settled from being sucked up again and going out to your vacuum. So what I did was to cut the inlet hole for the uh, incoming stream to be as smooth and as, as uh, the, the transition from the pipe to the bucket to be as smooth as possible. You see here I cut that. Um, just as well as I could. I'll show you how, how I did that in, in a second. Um, so this has a, a, the least um, turbulence possible as it's coming into the stream. There's no constriction here. We don't go to a, to a square um, nozzle at all. We just keep it full flow all the way against the side and it causes it to spin around here and start to settle out. When it's really coming in, you can see the lines of the, of the dust as it, as it, as it settles down. The other critical part of the of the theme system, the really the theme baffle, is this baffle here that's a, a certain distance down from the from the um, exhaust flange or from the suction um, pipe. And this the function of this is to stop the suction from pulling the dust that that has settled out up and in, in into your uh, vacuum into your filters. So this is um, um, cut slightly smaller than the bucket. Philip Thien cut it, um, he, he, his dimensions are an inch and a quarter, but I'm pretty sure from what I can read on his uh, website that, that that was defined by the size of his intake pipe, that he wanted to make sure that whatever he sucked in could fall down to the bottom. Since the vast majority of what I'm sucking is, is dust and, and fairly light stuff. I cut this actually an inch smaller than the bucket so that um, I, would, I would be able to uh, have the least air 
least turbulent air possible underneath the, this baffle. Then as the, as the dust and debris settle out, the, the rest of the air goes up, it goes out the, goes out the, um, the exhaust. Thien's original design had this uh, circle not be equal distant from the bucket all the way around, but he had 120 degrees where this actually contacted the outside of the, uh, of the chamber. I believe the reason he did that was because he had originally uh, an elbow coming in the top here and it was coming and then twisting it down like this. And I believe that he found that he had some vertical velocity on this elbow, which was shooting down and, and, and making the air underneath the baffle be too turbulent and he would suck up dust. I'm not sure about that, but I think that that's what it happens. Here, with what I've done here, and many other people have done, we're coming in right at, right tangential to the, to the bucket. And so we don't need that. We're coming in horizontally. So we don't need to have that piece here that's coming out to the outside. So I've cut this round and it's, it's equidistant. It's, it's, it's an inch away all the way around. And I haven't found any problems with that. So um, that, that's my ideas. And uh, we can see, see what it looks like. So here's my test setup. You see I've taken the filter out of the vacuum and I've cleaned out the, uh, the, uh, the bucket here. And uh, we'll run a test. I'll just um, vacuum uh, shop dust off the floor. That's pretty, that's pretty dusty. I mean, that's the worst case scenario is, uh, is dust like this. Um, um, you know, things like, like sawdust is actually, uh, you know, shavings and stuff is actually pretty easy to separate, but shop dust that's been walked into the floor and gotten really, really fine is, uh, um, well, it's, uh, that's the, the hardest thing to try to separate out. All right, let's have a look. So there's the, you can see how fine that is. And there's nothing in the, well, if, if it went in the, uh, in the shop vac, it would have just gone straight out, straight out, uh, just straight, straight, straight out the exhaust here. So you didn't see that, but you can see there's nothing else has accumulated in there. That's what was actually a bit damp, and you can see there's nothing stuck to the side either. So, um, no, it seems to work all right, even with my my modifications. And uh, of course, this is uh, super easy to make and uh, and just about free. So, especially if you have, if you have a bucket lying around. So, anyway, thought I'd show that to you. Okay, so what I'm using for the uh, for the piping is uh, light wall inch and a half PVC. I believe they call this Schedule 200. Um, it's a it's a thin wall, low pressure. And what I found is that my shop vac will will uh, will just fit right into here as a as a as a friction fit, so I don't have to do anything with that. So I just cut this center hole open. Cut it nice and tight so that it fits in there as a snug fit. So on the bucket here, you have to cut off these ribs here because this is where the uh, where the inlet is coming in. 
I pick a spot about halfway between the the handle uh, attachment points just to make it convenient uh, to carry. And I use my uh, just a cheap um, oscillating saw, um, and it works pretty well with this. So for the inlet pipe for the uh, for the uh, separator, you want to try and transfer the the uh, the, the diameter or the uh, the outside radius of the bucket onto this pipe so you can cut that. So we can just transfer it down with a with the magic marker. And then flip it over and do the other side. And you end up with a mark like this around the uh, around the pipe. And now we'll just cut it with the uh, with the oscillating saw. end up with something like that which you then transfer the mark over to the bucket cut this hole in the bucket and then sort of go back and forth on this on this on the holes on both sides to make a match up as well as you can Here you end up with these two marks, this pipe and then this, this hole in here. And there we go. Okay, so I've used um, a bit of masking tape to hold it in place while I while I glue it. Um, using a, um, just a regular hot hot melt the glue gun. Um, I'm patted on the highest setting of, to get the uh, high temperature on the glue, or uh, because I think it's. Um, I mean, this is a polyethylene bucket and a PVC uh, plastic on the pipe. So um, I want something that's going to be as aggressive as possible to, to try and uh, hold these two together because they're hard to glue. Okay, and now that's, uh, this is hard, so I've um, uh, taken the rest of the tape off and I'll glue the rest of it. So for the actual theme baffle itself, um, I have to cut a piece of baffle to go inside here. This is about 11 inches on the inside. I want an inch around the outside, so I'm going to uh, cut it nine, nine inches diameter. Um, I use just a piece of this uh, coroplast. Um, you know, you can get an old political sign or something. Um, Any anyway, old, old signboard. That's nine inches. Now to mount the baffle to the lid, I'm just going to use uh, quarter inch bolts, quarter by four bolts. Um, so I'm just going to lay this on here and align, align drill it. I'm using a 732nds bit, which is slightly smaller than the quarter inch bolt, so it'll fit, they'll fit nice and tight.
Then I'll put nuts, washers, this on, washers and nuts again to hold it in place. You know what? I lied. I'm just going to use nuts and, and uh, nuts on the other side. It's a tight enough fit anyway. There it is. All right, YouTube. That's what I had for you for, for today. Hope you enjoyed that. Um, yeah, you can see you can build one for build a dust separator for uh, for next to nothing, um, and it's pretty easy too. And you can make it with just really ordinary tools. So um, yeah, if you like that, please like the like the video, subscribe, and uh, leave a comment. I'd love to hear from you. Thanks. Bye.